Hey guys, welcome to another one of my tutorials. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different than usual, and it's probably going to be pretty short. I just wanted to make a tutorial that went over some of these basic um, math tricks that I use in a bunch of my tutorials, because I'm getting a lot of questions from you guys, and I'm starting to realize that a lot of people don't know these things, and I consider them to be like absolute fundamentals for game development. So I wanted to just quickly go through like a half a dozen of these little tricks that I use all the time for anybody who's curious about them. It's mostly related to like vectors and linear algebra. But but like I said, these are all super useful tricks and for game development. They all have very practical uses. I use them all the time. So the first one I wanted to go over is a vector subtraction. So you can see in this little demonstration here, I have two vectors, um, one at A and one at B, and they're just positions, X, Y, Z positions. And if you subtract vectors, you'll get a you'll get a new vector that is pointing to the one on the left side of the subtraction. So you can see in this example right here, if I walk on top of this blue circle, it's going to subtract B from A. And you can see this white vector pops up. So that's the vector that it created. It created a vector from B to A. And if you do it the other way around, if I say B minus A, it's going to create a vector from A to B. And then another thing that's really important about vectors is you can normalize vectors. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in the code. It's just a function. But if you don't know what that means, um, normalizing a vector makes it so that the vector has a length of 1. So if I go ahead and walk on top of this normalize thing, this is just going to enable it. So now that it's enabled, I'll go over here and I will stand on A minus B. So you can see it's drawing the same arrow or the same vector but this time it's normalized this time it has a length of one and i just demonstrated that by shortening it and same with this so normalized vectors um, they're also called unit vectors are super important because a lot of the times when you're doing math operations on vectors it expects them to be normalized so that's all a normalized vector is so this is kind of a more practical use case of you know why would i why would i ever use this subtraction so you can get pretty cool functionality with it really simply. So you can see these cameras, they just turn to look at wherever the player is. And all I'm doing here is using this exact same logic over here where I'm doing vec vector subtraction and I'm applying it to the cameras. So each frame, the camera is taking the player's position and it's saying, okay, the player's position minus my position, the camera's position. And it's saying that's my new forward vector. That's the vector I'm going to be looking in. So I'll just show you this real quick. So if we click on one of these cameras, or I just let me open up the blueprint for it real quick. Um, all right, so if we look at this blueprint, you can see it's just a box with a camera on it. And then inside of the event, event tick, I am saying get the player's location and get the camera's location. And then here we're doing the vector subtract. And then we're normalizing that vector. And again, normalizing makes it have a length of one. And then we are taking this new vector and we're making a rotation out of it. And we're saying that is our new rotation. So it's super simple. It's only, it's not using any like crazy functions. It's like very quick, very um, easy for the computer to do and super easy to understand. So that is vector subtraction. It's basically just good for when you want to get a vector that points from one thing to another. Okay, so the next thing uh, I wanted to go over is the dot product. Um, we kind of have two things going on here, so let's just focus on the left. So the dot product is a function which takes in two vectors. So the vectors it's taking in in this case are these two vectors here, the one that's pointing straight up, and then the one that's kind of rotating around. And the value above it is the result of that dot product. So a dot product returns a float value from uh, from negative one to positive one. So you can see as the vectors point further and for, further away from each other, it approaches negative one. And then as the vectors start pointing in the same direction, it will approach one. So if you watch as this left vector gets closer and closer to the top vector, to matching, that number at the top will get closer and closer to one. And you'll see point nine 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 nine, And it gets almost to one. It probably does get to one, it just doesn't show it. I mean, it, it does get to one, it just doesn't show it because it's like a split second. And then as they get 
to be totally opposite. So if one's pointing straight up and one's pointing straight down, you'll see it returns um, negative one. So this is a super useful trick um, if you were trying to find what I like to call like the likeness of two vectors. Um, so you, if you take you know the dot product of two vectors and it returns one, you'll know that they're facing in the same direction. And this is just kind of another example to show you that um, if you take the dot product of these two vectors, you're just going to get zero every time, even if it's rotating, because you know it, they're always going to be perpendicular to each other. And if you take the dot product of these perpendicular vectors, um, it's just always going to be zero. So a more practical use case for something like this is for like a half space test. And what a half space test does is it tests if you are, or it tests if, if one object is in front of another object. So in this case, I'm using this yellow line as my half space test. So you can see above the light, it's showing a value and that value is the result of the half space test. And if I go over the line, you'll see two things happen. One is that the value goes to a negative value and the other thing is that the light turns on, right? So positive, I'm over here. The value changes, but it never goes below zero. And as soon as I cross this yellow line, it goes to negative and the light turns on to signify that I cross the line. Now this isn't using any type of trigger box or any type of collision check really. It's just using this half space test, which is using the dot product. So let me just briefly show you um, how that works because it's pretty simple. So inside of here, inside of my little line thing, my line blueprint, uh, inside the event graph, this is all the code that's checking for whether or not I've crossed the line. And again, it's um, it's just it's very simple. It's getting the player's location, and then it's getting the location of ourselves, which is again just you know right here. And it's subtracting those, so it's using the vector subtraction, and then it's normalizing that. So, like we talked about before, when we do this, we're getting a vector. Um, from the yellow line to the player, right? And then we're taking the dot product of that vector, the one from the line to the player, with the line's forward vector. So if you look at the line, the line's forward vector is the x vector, so it's going this way. So if you imagine the player standing over here somewhere, it's basically taking the dot product of that red vector right here, and the dot product of a vector, imaginary vector that's going from the yellow line to the player. And back here, we're saying that is the half space value. So this is the value that's displaying over top of the light. So back in our level, where's my level? Back in our level, if you imagine what I talked about before, that little red line, so that little red line is gonna be pointing out towards us from the yellow line. And where there's gonna be another imaginary vector that's going straight to the player. So once I cross this yellow line, they're going to be facing in different directions. And so this is going to turn to a negative value. And so that's all a half space test is. Um, this is obviously useful for a lot of things in your game. Like whenever you want to check if you're in front of something, like if you're in front of an enemy, can an enemy see you? You can do a half space test. And it's a really simple way to detect that. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about, um, this is just kind of a little addition to the dot product. So if you want to get an exact angle between two different vectors, like I'm doing right here, you can see as this rotates, um, it's just showing above it the angle between the two vectors. So, you know, as it gets towards the top, it will say zero because there's no angle between it. Um, and it's just, it's just going to keep going around in circles. So to do this, um, there's a really handy trick that a lot of people just don't, don't know. Um, and let me, okay, yeah, it's in here. So let me find where I put that tick angle between vectors. Yeah. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the dot product of these two vectors, these two blue vectors, right? Um, oops. Sorry. I'm taking the dot product of those two vectors, and then I'm taking the arc cosine of it or the a cosine of it. So if you search for, um, I can't do it because it's running. If I search for a cosine and you can either get it in degrees or radians taking the a cosine of the dot product between two vectors will give you the angle between the two vectors and that's all i'm doing there's nothing else going on here um, well that's not true there's one little thing going on here 
If that's all you do, I'm just going to show you real quick. So I'm just going to hook up this arc cosine between these two vectors. If I go ahead and run this now, um, you'll notice one little thing has, has changed. Let's get back over here. So this number, it's going to get up to um, 180, and then it's going to start going back down again. Because the angle between the two vectors can never be greater than 180, right? But before, it was, it was negative when it was on this left side. So if you want to take into account whether or not it's positive or negative, you have to take it one step, uh, one step further. And you can do that by taking the dot product of the vector and then the right vector of the object you're taking. And then you can check if the dot product of that is less than zero. And if it is, then you basically just multiply it by negative one. And otherwise you just uh, multiply by one or, or whatever. You, you don't multiply by negative one. And that will give you um, the, the angle between the vectors, including whether or not it's positive or negative, if you care about that. Um, so yeah, that's a very useful thing to know as well. And the final thing, I want to talk about is the cross product. Um, this is super useful. A lot of people don't know what it's used for. But basically, if you take the cross product of any two vectors, it's going to give you, it's going to return to you another vector. And that vector is going to be perpendicular to the two vectors. So you can see right here, I have A and B at a right angle. And if I do A cross B, you'll see it gives me a vector that's perpendicular to both A and B that sticks out the left side, right? But it also could have stuck out the right side because that would have been valid as well. That's a perfectly perpendicular vector. Um, and so if you want the other result, then you just flip them around. So this is B cross A, and this is A cross B. So depending on which way you want the vector to go is how you apply them in the cross product. So if we go and we look at the cross product code real quick, it's, again, super simple. But um, so yeah, so this is the little blue trigger. And I'm saying get the vectors, and then I'm taking the cross product of them, which you can just find by searching for cross product. And again, it takes in two vectors and it returns you a new vector. And then I'm just setting the resulting vector to whatever that is. And I use this cross product all over the place. It's super useful for finding like normals to surfaces. I also use it in my wall running tutorial for figuring out um, the direction that the player should be running in perpendicular to the wall. So it's very useful for a lot of things. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Uh, hopefully somebody found this video useful. I know it's a little random and not what I typically do, but I wanted to make this because a lot of people were asking me about like all these different things and how they work. And they're all really simple, but if you don't know them, then um, you don't know them. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.